Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Avocado Insider series. It's your host Harshit Goda. And in this episode, we carry on our discussion with Dr. Ben Faber of University of California. Dr. Ben Faber has done a lot of research on avocados and he's a world-renowned expert in avocados. This is a very important episode because in this episode we talk about how to manage heat in avocado orchards. You see, I'm growing avocados in Bhopal where temperature goes above 40. Some of my customers who have booked their plants uh, are from Punjab, from Maharashtra, uh, from south of India in Karnataka, and uh, in those locations also the temperature can cross 40. So if you are in such a place, then you need to watch this video. But before we continue to the discussion, I have a special request to you guys. If you have any questions about commercial avocado farming. post it in the comment section down below and i'll ask dr ben faber those questions and post a separate video about it that way it would clarify your doubts and benefit the community i watched one of your videos it was uploaded recently on youtube it was about managing heat in avocado orchards so yes uh, can you tell me a bit more about it because the place where i am situated the temperature can rise very high like it's up to 42 degree celsius oh, and yeah, yeah. so i am not focusing on has my focus is mainly on uh, pinkerton okay and attinger and these varieties i have seen perform well in as well in hot climatic conditions so that's why that those are my focus yeah yeah so can you tell so, me a bit yeah um what we've looked at, well number 1 is proper irrigation Okay. So well irrigated trees are better yeah. able to sustain um heat, but the problem is uh avocados I and mean, there are a lot of differences in varieties. Hmm. And uh typically avocados in general okay will shut down photosynthesis at about uh 30 degrees centigrade. Okay. And and then they shut down their stomata. Mm. And when they shut their stomata that means they can't transpire, which means they can't do evaporative cooling on their leaves. Okay, so what's happened is our temperatures have gone to 45 degrees. Mm. The heat builds up for a prolonged period of time and it defoliates trees and it causes fruit drop. Mm. Um so what we only recently tried to do in California is actually put out sprinklers to do overhead irrigation well okay. it's not irrigation actually it's it's ir- overhead cooling okay so that uh so that we get water on the surface of the leaf and then we get evaporation which cools the leaf hmm. because the, the, the tree itself can't cool itself because the stomata are closed hmm. so in Australia they've done a, work on this now for i don't know about 10 years okay. so we 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 mimic some of the work that they've done there but doesn't it hinder pruning like mechanical pruning like if you have sprinklers uh, near the tree and that goes above the tree canopy but if you want to prune the tree through a machine then wouldn't that hinder the procedure well you you can put these uh risers the the, the the irrigation lines that go up on yeah. on um on hinges you can drop okay. them down and so the, the these sprinklers the, these emitters are are misters and and they're only being put out at oh, 10 per hectare so there aren't a lot so it wouldn't be a lot oh, of right, okay. work okay yeah, i thought it was i watched some of the videos and i thought it was on every tree well, that that's how they first started But, okay um we, we've got so it really boils down to a site specific design and uh, um a lot of this work has been done in Washington state on apples okay and so they, they they've learned to be able to put in many fewer emitters per Ooh. per area uh, if you have the right design Right. And sometimes it's you know it's it's just pulsing water. Okay. So it comes on for 10 minutes every hour. Yeah. Uh, you can rotate through the orchard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, 
you know, in, in Australia is where they first put in one riser, one, one riser per tree. Okay. And we found now that that's overkill. So it's not necessary. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, for varieties that you've just mentioned like jam, maluma, even common and lambas these are hass like varieties but do you think these have a higher heat tolerance than hass? <laughs> Lamb hass does not have higher heat tolerance I know that. Okay it does not? No. Um, okay. I don't know about maluma we mm -hmm. haven't really tried, tried it here um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Gem has more cold and more heat tolerance than pass. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Carmen? Oh, Carmen. Um, you know, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. Right, right. I mean, I, I know about lamb has and has and mm -hmm. gem because I've seen them side by side. Right. And Carmen, we've seen just blocks of Carmen in blocks of pass and it's hard to you know is it the hillside or is it the wind or something or yeah. i'm not sure okay you know the carmen was developed in in, um, in mexico in michoacan mm. michoacan is the paradise of avocados it's never hot it's never cold it rains every other day it's pure right. water it's volcanic soil you uh -huh. don't have to work <laughs> you know, and so uh, I don't know. There's not a lot of Carmen planted in California. Okay, it's called Mendez over there, isn't it? Correct, same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I hope you found uh, our discussion useful, and if you did, don't forget to press the notification bell and hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. That's it for this video.